Hi, everybody. If you are new to Pinkies Up, we aim to answer questions that regular people like me have about wine. Nick is on hand to give us all the extra info, but I always have questions. So this month we are asking what wine pairs best with pepperoni pizza. And if you know me as all at all as a wine drinker, I think you might be surprised by what you learn in this episode. So stay tuned. Welcome to Pinkies Up, a series where we answer questions normal wine drinkers like Bridget have about wine. I'm Nick, and I'm here to answer these questions in a way that makes sense whether you drink your wine with your pinky up or you drink it in a solo cup. Let's see what's going on this month. All right, I am super excited for this episode. I mean, I feel like I say that every time, but I think this is going to be <laughs> a good one. We're always excited. So when we do these, I like to surprise and delight you, Bridget. Surprise. Oh. I mean, I... You you love wine and I do. You have your ways, but you're always open to new <laughs> things. Like you're the best type of wine customer you can have. Someone oh. that knows what they like, can can communicate it, but um also you can surprise and delight from time to time. <laughs> Are you hoping to surprise me today? I am. I there's some things here. I have an idea in my head about what you might like, what you might not like, and I think this is gonna be great information for everybody that's listening. Yeah. Because if you're someone that's just like meh. I'm going to grab a Cabernet to go with my pepperoni pizza. You might learn something. And, I would be wrong. Is that you what you're know, saying? Enhance your, enhance your experience a little bit. So imagine this scenario, mind you. All right. So maybe uh, you're over at your friend's house. Uh, maybe you did your friend a favor. Maybe you helped move. Maybe a uh, sure. housewarming party. Maybe your kid was puking and uh, you had to go yeah. help out or something. So <laughs> your friend nice says. your friend. <laughs> you know what I have? A Jack's frozen pepperoni pizza. A crumpled pizza. up piece of Jack's pizza. We're having this for dinner. <laughs> oh. You know, you get the random paper plates yep. and napkins. Yep. These are Whatever's in the drawer. Whatever's in the drawer. <laughs> it's just a Tuesday night. Maybe you're at home. It's a Tuesday night. You don't want to cook and you don't want to do carry out because it takes too long. But you have your good your old trusty. standby frozen pizza. We all have the emergency <laughs> frozen pizza, do we not? Uh, right now, my freezer is freezer or is pizza empty, but that's a mistake. That's I a love, mistake. I always have this, and I could literally eat the whole thing. So okay. I think, in addition to your emergency frozen pizza, you should have an emergency <laughs> bottle of wine to go yeah, with that. Because if do you're agree. reaching for that emergency frozen pizza, what are you going to drink? You're I think need people, a bottle of wine. People drink beer, right? Usually, but I, I like don't wine always... with pizza. I honestly do. I mean, I like wine mostly, so <laughs> I do want to know what to what to eat with my pizza. Okay, so come um, on, man. You know, usually <laughs> with the food pairing, I'm very much a believer in what grows together goes together. <laughs> so, uh, so pepperoni and grapes. <laughs> <laughs> do they grow together? So you want Italian. So pepperoni is Italian. You sure, know, you think sure. you're on the sunny Neapolitana, you know, streets and the sunshine is down on you. So the, the classic pairing, and this is going to be the third one we try, is uh, an Italian red, Sangiovese. Sangiovese. Or, you know, some people say Sangiovese. Doesn't really matter. Um, that comes from the north of Italy, not the south, which is a little strange. So we do have a southern Italian red. And these are both kind of like no-brainer pairings. Let's be honest, a lot of wines go to pizza. But <laughs> I know. Uh, I was like, is anything going to be bad? I have two little out-of-left-field ones for you. Okay. And for people that maybe don't like big red wines, um, mm -hmm. we're going to try two wines that I thought would work really well. Uh, you think about your pepperoni pizza, you got a lot going on. You got the crunchy, crunchy, delicious crust. You got the spicy pepperoni. The pools of grease. The pools of grease. <laughs> the big, bright, acidic tomato sauce. The fatty cheese. So what you need is something with a little bit of fruit to kind of go with all the sweetness and the spiciness. Cut that off a little bit. Uh, something with some acidity to kind of cut through the fat of the cheese, stand up to the tomato sauce. And you want something that... Is a little wet because <laughs> wet the, wine. Because yes, it's like wet water. <laughs> you know, you want something that's got some wetness to it because that crust can get so dry if you don't have something kind of okay. loose. I think that's why people like beer, right? I feel like there's the hard part. Just wash it down. Like you have a lot of things to pair with. So, my first attempt at this, <laughs> and this is for people that maybe don't like red wine. I know, sacrilege. Uh, whatever. Who are you? But um, reach out. Who are you? <laughs> I thought a dry rosé would be great. You know, it's kind okay. of a white wine. It's kind of a sweet wine. Sweet wine. Hmm. I thought about pulling a wine that that would be just terrible to prove that not all wine works well. But yeah. you would need something like really flabby and sugary. And I don't really have anything like that in the store. <laughs> just peachy. Oh, just peachy would be terrible. <laughs> would be very bad. Okay, we found the thing not to drink with pepperoni pizza. <laughs> so normally, like, I drink rosé when it is hot. 
and it tastes like I can drink the whole bottle. <laughs> so this so, will be interesting. This is rosé all day. It's kind of a fun mm-hmm. shtick, but um, it's crisp. It's refreshing. Got some nice light red fruit. So I thought the crisp acidity in this would go well with the pizza. And for someone that doesn't necessarily like a really heavy wine, but mm-hmm. does want wine with this, it'd just be a nice kind of refreshing way to wash it down. So you mentioned fruity. Does the fruit matter? Like which fruits? I think if you can go with more of the red fruit flavors, that's going to work better than black fruit. You think about how sweet tomato sauce is. If you have a lot of like blackberry, black currant flavor. Oh, yeah. Like you'd get from some like very big Cabernets. That just doesn't really go with the sweetness of the tomato sauce. So you want some red fruit. Like feel immediately that I'm not going to love Cabernet with this. I said it, everybody. (laughs) I'm sure it'll be fine because it's Cab and it's delicious. But this is great because... It cuts right through the grease. Honestly, this one particularly to me stands up against like the grease. So maybe the cheese, maybe like the fatty cheese. That's a good choice. I mean, it just feels kind of like this. This wine is delicious, does not taste like water, but it feels like you're kind of just washing it down with water. So it's an easy pairing. Yeah. I mean, it's a little off the wall. Mm -hmm. Most people wouldn't. I wouldn't think that. And this isn't my first pairing, but I wanted to have something for the people that Mm -hmm. don't like red wine. Um, White wine probably isn't the best pairing. Really? Um, I thought about pulling one, but, Close um, enough. you know, I, I think you want some red fruit flavor to go with this. Um, you know, we have our standbys of sparkling wine champagne. Mm-hmm. Those always are great food pairings. I, I thought I was going to see that today, actually. You could do, um, you could do kind of a little uh, off dry Riesling with a little sweetness to go mm-hmm. with the pepperoni, but still a lot of acidity. But I just don't, I think you want some red fruit to go with the tomato, right? Okay. I mean... We all love, do you like tomato saucy pizza or do you like less tomato? No, I like tomato. I actually would prefer like more sauce to less cheese. I'm not like a gobs of cheese person. I think a lot of people like the sauce because it's fruity and acidic and bold. Maybe get some herbs on there. So I think red fruit's necessary. So good question here. Does this only work best with like Jack's thin frozen pizza or could it be deep dish? I think it works with deep dish too because you have the same things of that deep dish. I mean, let's be honest. It's a pie. It's not a pizza. <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. It's a casserole. It's, like, it's, it's yes. a Chicago casserole. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but even with like Detroit style or Wisconsin style, like w- when you have like that crackery crust, you want something that is it's gonna, wet. Yeah, it's wet. <laughs> Which is the funniest description, yep. but we've discussed and, that. And those styles all have a good deal of sauce. So okay. I think the red fruit's really a key to this. I have to say this next one coming in the line, I judged right away because like I'm not a fan of chilled reds usually. <laughs> okay, so this is a playoff of kind of the stereotypical, Ita- I'm sorry, like le- Italian, <laughs> Italian restaurant where you think yeah. of your Lambrusco. Yes, Lambrusco is what I was about so to say. Yeah, I said probably not a sweet white. But a sweet red, uh, uh, um, I think <laughs> actually nervous. could be really fun with a pepperoni pizza. Because now you get, you still have these red fruit flavors that I said are, are important. Yeah. Uh, but there's a little bit of sweetness to it. So if you aren't a dry wine drinker, this could be really good. Um, I don't have any Lambrusco. I actually love Lambrusco. There's a lot of really quality yeah, now, Lambrusco. Yeah. I mean, I, we talked about this last time I tasted Lambrusco that I had like crap Lambrusco that was $7 for a jug of it with my friend in Italy. <laughs> but yeah, I like Lambrusco. Mm-hmm. Actually, what I'm most nervous about here is that I'm going to have to tell you you're right because I do think this is going to be a great pairing. So, okay. So this is called okay. Keep It Chill. This is um, from a company that does a lot of other cool wines like Chop Shop that mm-hmm. you like. Oh, yeah. Um, and they make wines that are just easy drinking. They call it... Uh, mm-hmm. Crisp, vibrant, and cold. They also, <laughs> cold. <laughs> they also do a nice job with branding. Mm-hmm. I like their Chop Shop bottle. I love this bottle. Hmm. Oh. Oh, I also expected this to be, like, grossly sweet. Hmm. A lot of the chilled reds are I doing a better job of not making them grossly like sweet. This. You might have even, like, turned me to wanting chilled red with this wine. Cold Drink, go. Drinking cold red wine is a chill thing to do. <laughs> wow, I really like this. So something that's a chillable red is going to be lighter bodied, not a lot of tannin, because mm-hmm. tannin gets really gross yeah. when it's cold. Like, oh, really I gross. <laughs> just, mm. ah, on your tongue. <laughs> just, ah. I forgot to keep notes on my not computer here. <laughs> but, um, so something like a Lambrusco is going to be a little sweeter. This keep it chill is a little drier. But I think something that has a little skosh of sweetness to it mm-hmm. that's cold, refreshing. So this is aimed more at the person that mm. maybe you like sweeter wine. Maybe you like wine that's 
not super heavy. Um, maybe you like white wine and really don't like red wine because you're watching tannin. This is a lower tannin wine. Lambruscos can be lower tannin. None so, of those things describe me except lower tannin. <laughs> but you do like but it. I do. I like it. I, but like normally not, you know, normally I prefer red. Normally it is not cold. <laughs> yeah. I'm so surprised by this. Okay. Great job. So I thought that'd be fun because uh-huh. you get, and you know, if your pizza is too hot, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just, I think that's why people like beer too, right? It's cold. Yeah. You burn you your just mouth. Like, and... <laughs> you chug it down, guys. That's what we're here to tell you. Or you can do, so. I'm going to tell a mildly embarrassing story about Ooh, my wife. Excellent. While I finish this. So pizza. <laughs> she, uh, first time we made frozen pizza together, her and her brother were, we were both, we were at their house and we were having lunch and made a frozen pizza. And he looked at her and said, are you going to do it? After they took it out of the oven. And I'm like, what? They're like, what? That's kind of embarrassing. They cut the slices and put it in the freezer for five minutes. What? To chill it down. No way. But it could yeah. be. Oh, I like my food piping hot. So. Oh, that's I don't. So funny. I was like, this is genius. So they were very embarrassed by it. I never thought of this before. I thought Sarah and Mitchell very smart. That is, I do that for my kids' food. So, you know, there you go. So if you don't like right. your piping hot pizza, Man. little chillable red, Lambrusco, other types of chillable reds. Gamay is going to work from France, like a Beaujolais. Wait, what Beaujolais. kind of wine is this? They don't say. No. I'm guessing it's, it's French, so I'm guessing it's like um, Gamay and... Mm. Maybe some crappy Pinot Noir. <laughs> oh, my favorite things. <laughs> wow, that wine, you guys, it's is low alcohol, blowing so my mind. Well, that's the thing with white wines is, and <sighs> sweet wines. Like, I, it's not, you I mean, I, I hate sweet, but you just feel like it's juice. And it's so easy to just, like, chug glasses of white sweet, like a Pinot Grigio. I feel like you can just, like, chug it. And that's dangerous. I can just, like, you're out on the boat. You're drinking cans of wine. <laughs> Ooh, that's canned wine. <laughs> Binky's up, coming soon to you. Okay, so now we are into the bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. I'm nervous now because, like, I'm so impressed by these first two. So Sangiovese, Sangiovese is really what every idiot in the world should recommend <laughs> to you because it's really good. This is one of these, like, let's not push out the boat too far. These two, the first two, really are just for if you don't like dry red wine. Sure. Here's Jesus. something that's going to be really good with pizza that you'll enjoy. Sangiovese works so well because it ticks all of the boxes. Um, you might notice Chianti, Brunello. I was going to um, ask about you Chianti. You might see just Sangiovese on the label. Um, my first recommendation is don't buy a super aged wine. So don't go buy a Chianti Superiore or Reserva or something like that for this because you want as, as the grape ages, it gets drier and dustier. And that doesn't go great with the pizza. Doesn't sound great. Um, it gets drier, and then you get the crusty crusting. <laughs> so buy a cheaper bottle. Like in oh. all honesty, buy a cheaper bottle of Sangiovese. Um, just a regular Chianti. This one actually comes from Romagna uh, instead of Tuscany, which they have a little bit more red fruit in there. Um, so again, it kind of goes with their look for something a little bit fruitier. Uh, this is Castelluccio Lamore. Lamore, Lamore. <laughs> um, we don't know. And it's just a really nice bottle. The label's beautiful. You can see yeah. it has you know black fruit, uh, blackberries, red berries, violets, and a little bit of like <laughs> lilac on it. And it's I think very right on. Ready for spring? I I've had this wine. I don't remember in what context. I know it was with Nick somehow somewhere. Whether it was at the store tasting it, whether it was I don't know Pinky's up or a podcast. But I remember the label. And this so, is this is low alcohol. It's thirteen okay. percent. Like a lot of these types of wines are going to be. Um, it has the acidity because Sangiovese is naturally very acidic grape. Um, it's got a little bit of red fruit. It's got just a little bit of structure on the end. It's kind of medium body, not super heavy, not going to overwhelm your wine, and just delightful. Well, you said that this is an acidic wine, not too much yep. like competing with the acid and the tomatoes. Well, I think probably. you want like some acidity to stand up to it. Mm, okay. This is a different experience than the first two wines. Mm-hmm. So like... This is delicious. I do remember liking this wine. This is a great pairing. You're right. It's nothing like, I, it, it's not crazy bold. It's not a cold red. So it, like, I don't have a, I don't have many things I need to say about it. It's good. It it's pairs easily nicely, under fifteen dollars. But it is so different. I don't. It's just a different experience. So, like, you, <laughs> did you like the cold part of it? I think so. I think wow. that's what felt refreshing against the greasy cheese. Second sip. You know? Judge it on the second sip. <laughs> yep. You're right. You're right. Yeah, this is a little more dry. So this is more yep. just like 
me. <laughs> so maybe I just feel comfortable here. So I'm comfortable with my glass of San Giovese and my greasy pepperoni pizza. So this is a no brainer, but I'm a seasonal, like I, I yeah. do drink seasonally. Like it's it, 37 it, degrees outside. Yeah. It's spring. <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm wearing a sweater. I'm hot. I don't know. <laughs> so when it gets sunny and warm, I am like, I still sometimes want a red wine, but my normal go-to is not something I want to drink when it's 95 degrees out. That's why I'm so like crazy about this red wine, this chilled red wine. Anyway, this wine, great pairing, easy. I mean, like this is a no. This is yeah. This is this is great. <laughs> like if you walk into a wine shop and say, "Hey, I'm having pizza tonight. Uh, what should I have?" and they don't start you with, "I have this Italian red yeah. wine," because uh, their next one's also Italian, but not Ooh. Sangiovese. Uh, yeah. If they don't start you with that, walk out. The guy doesn't know what he's doing, <laughs> or the the lady, or I didn't mean guys, and you know, a man. The I meant, person, the person does not know. doesn't know what they're doing. Just walk out. Actually, it probably is a guy because women know. <laughs> Smart move, man. Uh, just walk out. Just is it like a out. widely accepted? I feel like this is a dumb question, but that's what we're here for. Practice that, like the uh, go where you grow what, or whatever. Yeah, what do. grows together yeah, goes gr- together. Is that first of all, it rhymes, which is easy, you know. And <laughs> except fun. I couldn't remember. It, but what grows together goes together. Is that like a practice? Yeah. Like you teach people when you're like, "Hi, you work at a pizza place. Here's what you should recommend." Yeah, for sure. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, soil type does have a little influence in what animal products are going to taste like and also what the agricultural products are going to taste sure. like um so you can get some common elements there also humanity's been around for like <laughs> hundreds of Ever. thousands of years sorry flat earthers um but we have figured out like this is the type of wine that our area can make and this is let's kind of work some things around it these are the crops that go well let's have a wine that goes with it so Weird. we've we we actually probably figured out the alcohol first because that's who we are. That's who we are. Um, so some of it's natural and some of it's like forced selection where we've, you know, we want things that taste good together. Like we're idiots if we don't. And, you know, we, over 100,000 years, we figured some things out. So, yeah, usually if you find stuff together, it goes together for a reason. Okay. Well, that makes me feel stupid. <laughs> like why, why is that not the first thing people learn about wine? <laughs> Think about like beer and brats. Yeah, except I didn't start eating brats until I was. Well, but you know, like the Germans, you know, <laughs> yeah, we got, you're right. you know, we have our fatty brats and yeah. we have our big box big and, you know, well, you know, we have great wine <laughs> beers to go with. How the Germans figured it, it out. You're right. It's so, it's one of those common sense things where you're like, wow, I am in my 30s and I am just learning this right now. <laughs> I was this many days old when I learned there was such a thing as wet water. I just referred to that. There's an Instagram account called Today Years Old. And I asked my sister, I'm like, do you know about this? I just learned something new on it yesterday. (laughs) It's a good account. I've actually checked it out. Yeah, it's great. So our last one is another Italian wine. And this one comes from more of the southern Italy region where the tomatoes flourish. And uh, (laughs) we think of our Neapolitana pizzas. Yum. Uh, This is a Nero Diavola from Sicilia. Okay. Sicily. Uh, In case you're (laughs) In case you're curious. Um, Nero Diavola (laughs) has not been very fashionable for a long time. It's kind of got overlooked, but in the 90s it got a little bit more fashionable. Uh, Sicily was long time the haven of the mob and crap wine. Uh, we love the mafia. There are great people and they are still doing wonderful things Don't in Sicily. Hurt us. But the, uh, the wine has really stepped up in quality. What, is that the Nero Diavala is like the name, the it type is the of grape. wine? Yep, oh, it is really? the grape. So I'm not familiar. Because this is a more recent. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, type of grape. They were smart enough to label it with the grape the way most people oh. in the international market could do it. So now there's new Nero de Vola de Sicilia. Nero. So this Nick is, is taking his Italian oh. class. Nero de Avola di Sicilia. So okay. there's like a area for this grape from Sicily. Um, okay. <laughs> which is more than we need to get into uh, for this oh. podcast. There you go. This comes from a winery called Morgante. It's a family-owned winery. They started in the early 90s, really dedicated to this grape uh, and really dedicated to Sicily. Sustainable, cool winemaker, all of the things. So this is for the cab drinkers. Okay. So the challenge (laughs) with cab, with red, with uh, pizza is the black fruits. Yeah, I'm actually nervous for this. So this is a fuller-bodied red wine, similar to Cabernet, but more red fruit flavors. Okay. Um, It does better in the heat than Cabernet, so... Um, it can get riper flavors without getting like uh, skunky. <laughs> mm. Didn't you say red fruits though were better with this? Yeah, and this has more red fruit. Okay, so this is good. Yeah, so Nero de Vola has more red fruit, while Cabernet usually has more black fruit. Oh, understood. So understood. same type of like big body. Okay. 
different type of fruit. So I wonder if this is just a wine I'm gonna like. I, I, don't know. I think it might be. <laughs> we'll see. And this was where I was like, I don't know, is Bridget gonna like this? Hmm. Tastes fruitier, obviously. Like you're just I'm just you need a nick in your life that can just describe everything before you drink it. So you can just be like, oh yeah, that's so exactly it's still what got it tastes some like, like nice tannin uh-huh. on the back end, but like good big wine. red fruit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I expect it to be like a cab because you said that kind of in a way. But it's yeah, it's fruitier. Hmm. It's like it's like when you want a Jeep styling, but the inside <laughs> of a minivan. <laughs> Who wants that? Well, I mean, you everybody. Want space. I guess. I guess every mom that doesn't want to drive minivan. a minivan. But who just told me they saw a minivan the other day? Like I could drive in that one. I was like, no, no, don't. Okay, this isn't my favorite pairing at all. You guys, who am I? <laughs> Nick's choking over here on his wine. He doesn't even know who I am anymore. What is happening? Actually, hmm. I thought it might go this way. Yeah, this is not, this is, but you well, like I won't wine, tell you right? my ranking. Yeah, I like the wine, but it doesn't but stand like, up to the, the pizza the same way. The wine is just not as good with the pizza. Man, when I have frozen pizza, I think it's a, it's a, like, neutral food. So I'll just have the wine I like and, like, whatever, these bu- carbs are filling my body. <laughs> 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 this is filling my stomach for no nutritional value. Who cares? I'll just drink what I want. I, this has changed my mind. It, I think... This is kind of the premise of this whole mm. podcast, right? Mm-hmm. It's like a good together little wine and food. I've been surprised many times on this podcast. Actually gives you like that 10% better. Mm. And if we can pick up 10% yeah. better in our life, like think about, again, <laughs> the scenario lesson. where you threw a frozen pizza in, <laughs> you're probably not having a great day, right? Yeah, so you want to drink. So like, and that little, like that moment where you'd be like, actually, this is really good together. Wow. Isn't because that worth it? I don't mean to say that it was bad together, but it wasn't enjoyable. No, like, I mean, it's, like if it's, you're, drink- you're having a drink and it was like with the chocolate one, we said like yes. the wine is good, the chocolate's good. Yeah. But-, but together, like I would just finish my pizza and then like have a glass of water and then move on to my wine if that's the wine I chose. I was going to say, I'm glad you said glass of water, not glass of wine because I'm going to no. call you a liar. <laughs> one singular glass. Um, This is fascinating as always. I, this week, I think this month, sorry, I don't even know what's happening, has surprised me maybe the most out of all of our episodes. Really? I think, I think. I don't know because, well, first of all, I expected every one of them to be good with it. And I would say three of the four were, and I would drink again, but I definitely wouldn't choose this. And if you didn't like that, I would say Cabernet is not going to be high on your list because same type of tannin, same type of body, but like black fruit but so i would not normally walk in if i'm just like oh here's my emergency bottle of wine it would never be it would always be a cab like or maybe a red blend I and guess. that's why i'm saying like maybe you have a little chianti yeah. around as a so i um here's another weird question because i saw it on the back of this bottle red table wine is that like a um is that an italian thing is that a like what is, explain that, that is a great question so um in europe there's a lot of classification levels of wine and what those classification levels have to do with are um, standards. So in, in America, the laws oh. we have about how we make wine are very broad and very... Um, loose? Loose. <laughs> and not quality driven. They're very just like, if you say this is wine from California, it has to be 75% of the grapes from California. 25% can be from Washington. <laughs> but it's mostly but, California. You know, in Europe, the laws are very different. So they have like Vinde table, Vinde pipe. Mm. So they have like table wine, regional wine, site specific, county wine, site specific. So there's levels. And so it's not just geographical, but also says for Vinde table, for table wine, you need to have all of the grapes come from this area. It can be these grapes, none of these other grapes. It needs to be this much yield. It needs to be aged for Mm. this long. And the idea because they've been around for so long and there was so much corruption in the wine industry. And for a long time, you, know, you couldn't drink the water. So wine was a little <laughs> wine bit was better. <laughs> wine was a little bit more important. Um, you know, there was a government approval on kind of like how we do meat, uh, that this wine is this much quality safe and we're not screwing with it. Okay. So, um, Table wine just simply means it's the lowest standard level. But still a high standard. Yep. And table wine, a lot of people um, that want to do innovative things, uh, table wine has like no restrictions on it. So if you like want to use a new type of aging, so maybe Sicilian wine says it has to be aged in oak. 
well, what if you want to only do this in stainless steel? Okay. You can't say it's Sicilian wine, but you could say it's table wine. So does it compare in any way to what we call house wine? Like I'll have the house red. No. So house, house wine is more of like just... It's a restaurant thing to buy one red wine that should go with everything. Oh, okay. okay. You don't worry about the brand. Um, or the type and, of wine. Yep. And so it's something that should go with everything. You don't worry about the brand. You're not buying it because you're worried about the brand of the wine. You're, you're buying it because you trust the restaurant. Okay. So yeah. like, um, my house wine is going to be something. And a lot of times you can actually do really good deals because you could say to um, some big wine company like, hey, uh, we go through... 150 cases of our glass pour red. Could you make something for me? And you don't have to then, you can get a good price. They can dump some fruit and they don't have to like screw over their margin on everybody else. <laughs> so it's usually a pretty good yeah. way to go. So, I mean, it depends. Uh, at good restaurants, it's sure. a great way to sure, do sure, sure. because they have a, someone that cares about the wine and is going to want to put their name on it. At crappy restaurants, they're serving you whatever's left over. <laughs> they're serving you Boone's Farm. <laughs> Which is usually like neon colored from my memory. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so table wine, that's a okay. great question. It just means it's a, a lower quality level. Um, if you did the Germany wine tasting with us, yeah. Mm, um, yeah. Uh, they talked about, uh, did a really nice job of explaining there's different quality levels in German wine. So it's the same type of thing where it doesn't necessarily mean the wine's worse. Um, usually the high, almost always the higher quality levels are better, but um some of the some of the lower quality ones will just be more innovative or funner. Sure, funner. It just reminds me for those of you listening from the Milwaukee area, or maybe not. There's a place called Zafiro's, like oh yeah, crispiest, thinnest crust pizza. And I used to live right by there, and like th- I saw this on here, and like that place just makes me think of like Italian mafia, <laughs> Chianti, and table wine, or you know. Yeah. So th- it just made me think of like this. So a place like let's do another Milwaukee one, like Pizza Man. Sure, yeah. Um, that does great pizza but has a world-class wine program, mm-hmm. they're going to have something like this Nero de Vola as their house red. Oh, because interesting. Because they care deeply oh my God. about <laughs> the quality of their wines and I presenting not... something in, in, you know, that's of a quality. I'm not mature enough to be drinking good wine when so I live there. So they'll get something like that, get okay. a good price on it. Um, interesting. And that's what they would do as their house This red. is a great wine now that I'm just drinking it without the pizza. Yeah, it's like um, right up your alley. It is. It's nice. Um I had never heard of that grape. Like, I was like, I figured that was the brand, not the grape. I have no idea what that is. So I learned so something new. My advice is if you're someone that just wants big, bold red, don't drink a Cabernet. Yeah. Um, Zinfandel would work well if, if you like that. Um, Zinfandel's yeah. actually from Croatia originally. Really? Yep. Um, <laughs> Croatian and, uh, wine? Croatian wine. Um, now does well in California, obviously, but that's going to work really well. It's called Primitivo. You can get it from Southern Italy as well. Um, but if you just want a big wine, go with a Nero de Vola. Best wine pairing, like no brainer, is going to be a Sangiovese. But if you're someone that doesn't like red wine, chillable red, yeah, uh, maybe a Lambrusco, something like that, or dry rosé is going to be great. And of course, sparkling wine. Always. Do you always. need my definitive ranking? Yeah, let's hear. As it. So always. that was my like expert thing. But that's but now, pretty close, man. The floor is <laughs> yours, Bridget. I want to hear from we'll, from you. We'll count down from four to one. I think I've made it pretty clear that this will be my number four, the Nero Diavola. So good wine, just not my favorite with the pizza. So this is a eat your frozen pizza, have your wine later wine. Um, also best in the colder months, in my opinion, because it's a bolder, it's a very Bridget style wine. Uh, it'll be interesting as we continue this into the summer to be like, Bridget, your wine taste changed in the summer. <laughs> so anyway, that is number four last on my list. Number three, this was a tough one, but rosé all day is number three. And that's simply because like, uh, I drink rosé when it's hot out and I'm like on the beach. Um, but like, I liked the number two much better. Yeah. I mean, it works. It's just, yeah. It works. It, it's wet. You know, yeah. it washes down. It, it stands up nicely. It's better it than feels... a Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> yes, which is normally a wine of my choice. You're right. So it, it's got some red fruit in it. Yeah. Great. You know, number two, keep it chill, which like is my new favorite maybe summer wine because it's red. <laughs> we'll see. And we have it at like 40 degrees. If you want to have it really good, get down to like 30. Oh, it's. That was good. It's um, delicious. That is that is straight up summer wine where you're like, this is cold and delicious. I'll just chug the whole bottle and be in trouble later. <laughs> so that is my number two. And my number one 
choice is the obvious Sangiovese that was a great pairing. It's like, obvious. This is delicious. I would even drink it in the summer because it's not very heavy. It was, I think Nick called it medium bodied. Obviously, that's a great description. Um, tastes great with the pizza and great on its own. So I just had to chug a little bit of that rosé because I had. Uh, <laughs> Do you need some water? Crust. Yeah, yeah. I had, a cr- <laughs> I had like that. So usually I don't eat the full exterior of the crust because I don't like the crunchiness. What? But yeah, eat to where the cheese is at. Like just saving mine because it's really loud in the microphone. Yeah, it is. So, but like I was like, oh my god, it's scratching my throat and something wet. I was wondering, which like, is a great thing about the rosé, right? Chug that instead of water. So, really good choices. Uh, didn't Thanks, Bridget. didn't love the fourth one with the pizza, but other than that, like all good wines, man. So this was a fun one because yeah, it's just one of those like. Hey, I know this is a little ridiculous, but life is ridiculous. But we all eat a frozen pizza. Don't pretend you don't. And, you know, why not make it just a little, like, this takes you no effort to have, everybody has a wine rack in, you know, in your cabinets or on your top. Everybody has a couple bottles of wine laying Sitting by your toaster, which is where mine is. (laughs) Make one of them a bottle of Italian Sangiovese. Yep. um, Whether it's a, just a normal Chianti, whether it's something like this that says Sangiovese on it, have one around when you, you... it's also the best pairing with pasta. Maybe we'll oh, do a spaghetti one. Yeah. <laughs> you guys want to see us eat spaghetti on YouTube? <laughs> um, you're going to make spaghetti. You're going to make something with tomato sauce, right? Um, <laughs> have that for that. It's going to make your experience a lot better. It's going to give you that little bit of smile. And if we could all gain one more smile a day. We're winning. <laughs> I'd like to buy the world a glass what are you of singing? San Gio Vese. What are you singing? It's, you know, I'd like to buy the world a Coke. <laughs> but... Wine themed. Jingles for Nick. <laughs> uh, Coca Cola, we also take bribes. We would love to do how good Coca Cola is. With... We will even drink Aha tasting bubbly. Ooh, yes. That is the Coke brand, bubbly. <laughs> you guys, as always, we hope you learned something from this wine tasting. Hope you learned something. Uh, we'll have on our website in the show notes details about yep. all of these wines. Um, they're, they're honestly widely available to keep it chills a little harder to find. Oh, it's, um, it's a bummer. But we got on that one pretty pretty, pretty, pretty early. early. Yep. Um, but the categories are easy to find. Uh, I would love to say I can ship them to you, but it's illegal in the state of Wisconsin, <laughs> so I can't. Bummer. Um, but yeah, we, we, we just hope you find something that brings a little bit more joy to your life. And what we learned today, guys, what grows together goes <laughs> together. Don't forget. <laughs> so make sure you subscribe for all of our weekly episodes of Dinner Plus Drinks, our monthly episodes of Pinkies Up. That's right. And make sure to find us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook at Dinner Plus Drinks Podcast. If you have any ideas of future episodes you'd like to see, hello at dinnerplusdrinks.com or fill out the contact form on our website dinnerplusdrinks.com <laughs> and uh we'll we'll check that out we have some some kind of fun ones coming up yeah I think. we do we've just brainstormed a whole bunch of new ones for the next few months so send some ideas your way or send some ideas our way rather we love to see what you want to hear and we'll record it thanks guys cheers Bye-bye.